Today's lesson is going to introduce us to the concept of simple harmonic motion. The topics we're going to cover <coughs> are basically going to be differentiating between simple harmonic motion, what is simple harmonic motion, and other types of periodic motion. <coughs> we'll have a couple of words that we're going to uh, define, pri uh, primarily period and frequency, amplitude and equilibrium. Some of these terms you've already seen, especially uh, may have already seen uh, in your math class. Uh, and then we're also going to look at uh, the formula for the period associated with a mass spring system and a pendulum. Um, we'll also uh, look at Hooke's Law in this PowerPoint. The things with a star are basically um, aspects of simple harmonic motion that I'm going to explore a little bit further than what we have in the curriculum. Okay. First off, the reason we study simple harmonic motion is because there are many situations in nature where simple harmonic motion exists, okay? So uh, here we have, on the left-hand side, we have a pendulum, okay, it's over here. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, we basically have that mass spring system I talked about earlier, okay? It's a mass just basically hanging on a spring and it will bounce up and down and up and down. All of these systems would go on forever as long as there's no friction involved. Now, in real life, friction exists in many, many different situations. So we will see um, these systems stop eventually. In the middle are two other uh, examples um, of simple harmonic motion. On the U-shaped uh, thing with the blue line going up and down, that's basically water in a U-shaped tube. Okay, if you displace that water uh, and let it slosh back and forth, that's another example of simple harmonic motion. It will eventually stop as well because of friction between the water and the surface of the tube. Uh, and over here we also have a tuning fork. Okay, the ends of the tuning fork vibrate in simple harmonic motion. Uh, usually too fast for us to see, but we can hear that. Okay. Um, so again, the reason we study simple harmonic motion um, is because it exists in nature. It's also going to be kind of an introduction to the understanding of waves. Okay, yes, we're not talking necessarily ocean waves, but primarily like sound waves and light waves that we're going to see. If you ever go and uh, talk about communication, like AM radio or FM radio, or even cell phones, okay, those all operate on the understanding of electromagnetic waves. Okay, and again, uh, so we're going to be looking, the next topic we'll study is waves. First off, simple harmonic motion is any periodic motion where the restoring force is proportional to the object's displacement from equilibrium. Okay, so periodic motion basically means it repeats itself over and over and over at a constant time interval. Okay, so the second hand moves one every second. Okay, so that's an example of periodic motion. Uh, or the minute hand, uh, the second hand goes and makes a full circle every minute. Okay, um, a person bouncing a ball where it's a constant time between each bounce. That's another example of periodic motion. Those are not examples of simple harmonic motion, however, because the definition of simple harmonic motion requires that the force bringing the object back to the middle must be proportional to the object's displacement from the middle. Okay, for a person bouncing a ball, if I think of the middle as halfway between the floor and uh, the person's hand, okay, the force on that ball is always going to be downwards except when it gets to, uh, except when it bounces off the floor. Okay, and as long as it's in the air, it's always going to be equal to the mass of the ball times 9.8. Okay, so it's not proportional, it's more or less constant except for when it hits the floor. Okay, um, so that's the defining formula or defining equation for simple harmonic motion. Okay, it should have this view of the force being proportional to minus 
uh, the displacement, okay? So the minus basically means it's a restoring force. If I displace it to the right, the force is going to be to the left. If I displace it up, the force will be down. That's what the minus sign means, okay? It just means that it's opposite the direction of the displacement. That little uh, fishy looking symbol is a proportionality symbol. If I wanted to make it an equal sign, okay, I need to put a constant in front and that's what the constant C is. Um, it's just a mathematical constant, okay? In class, I will show you the algo do simulation. I don't want to take the time in this video. So the two primary mechanisms that we're going to use to study um, simple harmonic motion are these two. The one on the left is a pendulum. Uh, it's a mass basically hanging on the end of a massless string. Okay, and the other one is this mass spring. It could be horizontal or vertical as in this case. Okay, um, either way we'll be ignoring friction in these systems. Okay, so a couple of definitions. Well, actually more than a couple. The first definition is period. A period is defined as the time required to make one complete back and forth motion. Okay, so period is going to be measured in seconds. The period for a second hand is 60 seconds because that's how long it takes to go all the way around one full motion. Okay, for this pendulum, the, time, the period is the amount of time it takes to go from one side all the way across and then all the way back. Okay, so that's period. Do need to be a little bit careful. Sometimes uh, people make the mistake of calculating the period as only half a cycle uh, because we measure, a lot of times we measure from the middle. So the time, if I start from the middle and say, well, the pen period is the amount of time it takes to get back to the middle that would be wrong because I've only done half of the cycle. I've only gone right to middle. I haven't done left to middle. Okay, so do be a little bit careful about that. Okay, frequency is the companion to period. Okay, they're effectively the same thing, just different ways of expressing it. Okay, because frequency is the inverse of period. That means if I know what frequency is, I also know what period is, and vice versa. Okay, if I know period, I know frequency. So frequency is going to be measured in 1 over seconds. If period is seconds, then frequency is 1 over seconds. Sometimes I'll use the phrase cycles per second, okay, but it, cycles is not really a unit. It just helps to think of it that way. So instead of... So there are times we will be using the term hertz uh, for frequency, especially as the numbers get really, really high. I know we don't use hertz that much in um, chemistry, but our frequencies are really, really small. Okay, so be a little, um, be aware that hertz and uh, one over seconds is the same thing. Two more terms that we'll use are amplitude and equilibrium. Okay, an object's equilibrium point is the center of its motion. So if I'm going right to middle, left to middle, equilibrium is going to be the middle. Okay, amplitude is how far, the maximum displacement that I go from the middle or from that equilibrium point. I'm going to have a positive amplitude and a negative amplitude. Okay, if I look at it from a graph standpoint, many of you may have seen this, especially if you're in pre-calc. Uh, in pre-calc, you should have looked at and examined graphs of the sine and cosine function. Um, and so here's an example of one. Okay, period would be the amount of time it takes to make one full repetition. So in this case, um, I've got a full repetition as I go up and down 
and then back. So that's one full repetition. And that's the amount of time it takes to make that. This midline is our equilibrium point. Okay, and amplitude is the uh, displacement from uh, the equilibrium. There should be exactly the same number amplitude on the positive side as on the negative side. Okay, when we talk about amplitude, we really don't talk about uh, amplitude is going to be a positive number. Okay, so it's just going to be absolute, but realize that there's going to be a similar displacement on the negative side. I talked about sines and cosines, and the reason I talk about that is because there's a very strong connection between simple harmonic motion and uniform circular motion. If I look at this picture on the lower right hand corner, okay, the two purple or blue dots are basically the same height the whole time. The one on the right is just basically going in a uniform circular motion, meaning it's moving at a constant speed around this circle. The mass that's going up and down on the spring, however, is not going at a uniform speed. At the top here, it's going slower, and at the bottom it's going slower. It's going pretty fast in the middle, okay? But, so if I think of just the y value of this circular uh, dot, that's going to be simple harmonic motion, okay? And if you think about that, the y value is the, going to be the sine of this dot. Okay, just uh, sine of theta times the radius. So um, we're not going to go in the realm of the sines and cosines, um, primarily because not everybody's math is there yet. Um, but next year, and if you follow more of an advanced physics, we'll definitely be looking at sines and cosines. So... I told you it's periodic motion, and if it's periodic motion, I should be able to calculate that period. And for a pendulum, the period is given by this formula down here, which is going to be 2 times pi times the square root of the length of the pendulum, basically how long that pendulum is. So if this is my pendulum, this is my length. Okay, and g is that acceleration due to gravity, that 9.8 on Earth something different on different planets, but on Earth it's 9.8, okay? And this is true for a pendulum as long as I keep my angular displacement small, okay? I use roughly about plus or minus um, 10 degrees. If I displace it more than 10 degrees, that approximation slowly gets worse and worse and worse, okay? So um, be a little bit careful about that. Uh, at that number, okay? It's only because of small displacements. I'm not going to go into the why that is because the derivation is a little bit mathy uh, and again not everybody is uh, well versed on sines and cosines. The other thing before I get into the uh, mass spring, okay, Hooke's law we covered very briefly yet towards the beginning of the year. Okay, but Hooke's Law describes the force of an ideal spring. And it says that the force is going to be, there's that minus sign, okay, minus k, where k is the spring constant, times the displacement, okay. In general, the springs that we have in school are somewhere in the range of 1 to 200 newtons per meter, okay, but you can certainly have much, much stronger springs, okay. And this is important, okay, because Hooke's law basically says that my force on this for the spring is a restoring force because of that minus sign, and it's a constant based on the displacement. It's a perfect example of simple harmonic motion. So I want you to try this problem uh, at home. Okay, I recommend pausing it here because I'm going to give you the answer. Okay, but so pause your video and try and figure out this uh, on your own. Remember, I need to convert centimeters to meters. Okay, so the answer to this turns out to be 90.1 grams. You should have said Kx, okay, uh, for the spring equal to mg for the mass, and then solve for the mass. <coughs> Excuse me. So this gets into why we use the mass spring system. We'll probably use the mass spring system slightly more 
But for simple harmonic motion, that f is equal to minus k delta x is basically perfect simple harmonic motion. There's no nothing that says I have to move it just a little. Okay. So the period of a spring is going to be given by this formula. Uh, 2 pi times the square root of the mass on the end of that spring divided by the spring constant k. Okay, nothing else matters. Notice that there's nothing here about how far I move it. Okay, um, there's nothing here about gravity. Okay, it only depends on the mass and depends on the spring constant. Same thing for the pendulum. Okay, for the pendulum, it depends only on the length of the pendulum and the acceleration due to gravity. The mass on the end of it doesn't matter, doesn't affect my period at all. Okay, so thank you.